All right, what's happening, fellow build connoisseurs? Um, got a couple of questions about the uh, raid debuffer tune, so I thought I might try and just uh, explain it uh, best I can, and then why I built it this way, and how it can be improved and stuff. So again, I'm not like the best uh, builder of builds. There's other people that have uh, much better ideas and can get squeeze like every little bit of um, efficiency out of it. But uh, for the most part, what I've done here, we've got the uh, 12 favored soul, six monk, two warlock. Now, 12 favored soul is for basically the HP. Uh, you know, they get from Stout of Heart, which is um, which is granted. Uh, so it's 10 HP per level, pretty much, including your favored soul levels and your epic levels. So this gives us, uh, you know, 220 HP or so. We also have the knowledge of battle, which gives the wisdom to hit and damage when you're using favored weapons. And the build is using daggers. So that helps there. I'm maxing wisdom. And stats here. Wisdom build pretty much. We're also just in an R1 DOJ here. But that's fine. Um, now, six levels of a monk. This is a little bit of room for change here. Understandably, you could possibly go less monk if you wanted down to about four. The reason we take the monk is for Jade Strike. Oh, I understand this is a handy, but first things first, Jade Strike here, uh, when the target fails to save, reduces their um, fortification by 25% and gives them damage vulnerability of 10%, so it increases everyone else's DPS, right? But you need to have a decent wisdom mod, so the DC is quite high. Some bosses have very good saves and you might not land all the time. It's a bit of a shame, so we want to land it as often as possible. But as you can see, that requires a monk level 3. So the argument there is that you really only need 3 levels of monk on this build. Um, and in saying that, we also have 2 levels of warlock, right? So for the levels of warlock, we have consume here. Uh, consume is like a little spell, but uh, you need to cast it to get taint the aura. Uh, taint the aura gives a PRR and MRR debuff to... Like the enemy or the boss that you are attacking, or that you shoot it at, rather. Um, there's also an argument to run up here and get the Stricken Soul, but you need three levels of Warlock for this. Um, and when you use your melee attacks, it decreases the uh, bosses or mobs' melee power, range power, and spell power by 20. The reason that is good is because it can make the bosses uh, do less damage to your tank and make things a little bit easier, you know? Or if, they turn, if the boss turns around to attack the party, it's doing less damage, maybe less people will die. So, there's an argument there to go less monk, more warlock. Depends what you want to do, of course. Um, but while we're here at the enhancements, this there's a lot of flexibility here. You can do almost whatever you want, as long as you are getting these uh, Tainty Aura, Jade Strike, and whatever other debuffs you can find, really. Um, I've gone up in the War Soul Tree here. You know, it gives us a little bit of HP, Divine Will. I think Divine Will, if you want to be doing damage, you kind of need it because it gives half of your wisdom mod to damage and stuff um, and also in flame you get a plus four action boost to your damage and attack rolls for everyone that's inside it and that also greater in flame gives uh, action boost enhancement uh, action boost bonus to the absorption it's more of a buff to the party than a debuff to the boss but the more you can do the better uh, we've also taken a lot of stuff here in the vistani knife fighter tree um, see, I'm still up in the air whether or not you need it. It's kind of this stuff doesn't give you debuffs. This stuff more gives you like defenses and some more DPS with your daggers. An argument here is that rather than taking all this crap, you can go over to the Asimar tree and get up here to the Ascendant Bot Protector and get more HP. Um, more HP is good because um, to stay alive longer, right? And do more DPS. Uh, yeah, and also we have Knock on the Sky here, which is one of the four key elemental strikes. The reason we've taken Knock on the Sky is again because it makes the boss or mob that you are doing damage to, that you land this on, do 4% less physical damage and it stacks up to 5 times. So 20% less damage can make a huge difference in say a Reaper Raid or even just a hard Pug Raid and it stacks with a lot of stuff so it is handy like the Stricken Soul, you know, that just make your tank's life and you therefore your healer's life a lot easier. Alright, and as I said, this Vistani Knife Fighter Tree, you don't have to go all the way up, you don't have to get the Capstone. Like the Capstone's nice for the ability scores and the range parent stuff, but your damage isn't really 
what the party wants it's your debuff so if you want to put more stuff in asmr or maybe there's some more healing stuff you want or falconry it it is kind of up to you but i've just stuck with this to keep it simple do a little bit of damage when i can you know i've got haste boost here and uh miss stalker and stuff so and that is up to you now for the trees the destiny trees i'm running in fate singer but i've also talked to people that run it in shadow dancer now the reason they're running in shadow dancer is because the shadow mastery here when you land a warble basically so when you roll a 20 on a melee or range attack they take five percent more damage it's another great debuff to add to our package but i'm not sure if it's as good as running in fate singer the reason being the fate singer has bound fate and the bound fate with grim fate makes them take an additional 12 percent vulnerability or 12 percent more damage rather to our physical attacks um, so that is a big debuff and granted it does not work on some bosses from what i've seen but i've also seen the immune uh, like words come up but then you'll see the debuff still on the boss so uh, unsure about how consistent it is at working on bosses but i still use it because it's great increases the dps of everybody by a lot um and back to the let's back to the more basic things on the character sheet here so i've maxed out as i said before wisdom and con i, I just dumped everything else int is handy if you want some skill points for like balance and umd and heal uh, but otherwise put my levels into con uh, sorry levels into wisdom and um from there everything's got to about 80 which is pretty good uh, but moving into the gear here uh, still struggling to get the perfect gear set up, but uh, as I'm sure a lot of people feel like they're in the same boat when they're trying to make a build, there's always something that you can't quite fit or something that you want. What I have gotten here, first things first, is this Heart of Solomides from the Vision of Destruction Raid. It just makes your life so much easier when you're running raids. You don't have to worry about curses and stuff, and if, if it's desperate, you can heal other people in raids that are taking damage if they have curses and stuff and they're trying to deal with that you can give them a heal because you don't have to worry about it you can keep your debuffs going because again you don't have to worry about curses especially handy in like i said vision of destruction and also project nemesis it's just a quality of life thing mostly and you could argue that maybe the ring from shan with wisdom and stuff and the quality accuracy and quality deadly would be better fair enough again it is up to you um the rest of the gear what i've basically tried to do is get four pieces of winter just with hp because the saves on the turn the character aren't great like uh, the reflex there is quite low the will is probably fine but a lot of the time i'm pretty sure i'm failing saves so having all this hp you know up to 3.6k here in a reaper quest with only 29 reaper points uh yeah 29 so it's quite low you'll stay alive a lot because uh, you're also wearing cloth means you have an mrr cap your prr doesn't get too high so yeah back to the gear decisions i've made you need to run in clothing because you have the monk levels and you want to be able to stay in your stance you can choose to stay in like ocean or mountain or fire if you want damage i think i may have taken one of the monk feats to boost it up a little bit i just think i went up enough to get the sun stance crit multiplier but in saying that i never run in sun stance because i'm not doing damage so i'm finding i'm running in the ocean stance for a bit of dodge and uh slightly high dcs on the um jade strike back to the back to the gear here a little bit so just the legendary cloak of winter i understand it's probably not amazing it's got the false life and i've got it for the set bonus the uh legendary belt of the ram you know rams might you can't really find anywhere else it's got speed and it's got con the con i think is the reason i got it for but there's plenty of other good con items out there right so this again you don't have to choose that if you don't want to it's probably something better for you or even green steel i had to get the celestial ruby just for the accuracy and the stunning uh, and probably the ghostly it's it's probably a bit aged now this ring there's probably a lot of better choices out there uh the gloves obviously are part of the shan set uh, I'd, I'd like to be able to change it up but i just feel like the set bonuses here are too important i've got the uh, legendary deep snow boots it's such an easy item to get and it just fills up so much stuff for many builds like insightful con quality con used to be kind of a little bit hard to slot but, uh, on top of that it's got like freedom and it's obviously got the winter set bonus so it's yeah really good now i've got the legendary nocturne ring here this is a big kind of like problem with how i've geared things that it could be better i've got this basically for the set bonus everything else there does not help this build inside inside for fortification 
kind of handy, take less crits, and the true seeing saves you getting it from a twist or a scroll or something, but at the same time, it's just there's so many other rings out there that probably give the build more. But like I said, I've just taken it to get this set bonus. Um, you could probably get the helm or something else from the window set to get that. It's just a 20% HP, it's just so good, in my opinion. Now these legendary cold iron braces with vitality and quality false life, all that HP is kind of expanded out with your epic defensive fighting and bonuses like that, I'm quite sure. So it is it's a great item really uh, for people that need HP. The ghostly, uh, well, you know, it's, it's handy, but uh, it's, other than that, I just think, again, this is another item that I've just taken for this set bonus and the stuff on top is just whatever. Now, I have a collective site here, which is where I put my wisdom. Another argument here is that people could go double con. You could go 21 and 10 con here and put your wisdom like on the ring or something and move that all around. It's up to you, but I just hadn't quite slotted my wisdom anywhere. Farm these out and put them on. Um, last piece of gear to look at here besides the necklace from Sean is the... I've just got a legendary pansophic circlet because it has a reaper ability boost. Now here, you could... You can put anything. There's Titanium's Glory is great. Um, the Legendary Crown of Fireflies, probably not as good, but it's got some devotion on there for healing, but how often are you really healing? Not too much. Uh, the Crown of Snow, I think, is quite quite good to get another um, slot to have the bonus, and you can change a ring, etc., etc. It just it all becomes like up to you. Um, I've also slotted, as you can see in there, Festive Wisdom. You want to get as much wisdom as possible. Um, just you the slotting stuff that can come later, everyone has different ideas on that, so you can do that whenever you feel like. It's not a huge deal. Um, the weapons, I'm using suffering and pain, but more often than not, I find myself using the suffering and the legendary green steel dust offhand. Uh, the dust offhand is another PRR debuff for the bosses, so it's really good. It stacks up really quickly, and it's good to go. On the uh, suffering, this is where things kind of push the build a little bit further. I've got a five piece here, Shadow Device. Now the Shadow Device five piece, or the four piece rather, is another debuff of PRR and MRR. Which basically, you, you want to have this five piece, it's the best way to go. And the rest I've got just bits and pieces to make myself stronger. Basically, HP. So I've got Nissels, it'll be a five piece for the uh, MRR cap to keep me, keep me alive a little bit and the 100 hit points from before and then just whatever you want there's like some good filigrees to give plus two wisdom or plus two con whatever you think you need but I really think the five piece shadow device needs to be first and then anything to give you more HP and stuff to keep you alive is the probably best as you can see here also I've got an orange and red slot full with more debuffs the deconstructor as you know it gives you adamantine and I think the destruction effect to reduce AC and the essence of constellation broken and reforged is when you get the two weapons from two to handle make them into an augment and i'm pretty sure is another debuff so as always the more debuffs the merrier the feats i've taken are basically just like two weapon fighting and toughness feats right and from there pretty straightforward the epic feats Got the Aethic Warden because I like more MRR and PRR. Probably doesn't. You could probably take something else there. There's an argument for that as well. Like, so there's a lot of flexibility in the build, but what we're trying to do is bring as much debuffs to the raid or party as possible. We want to make everyone else stronger. Um, the legendary feat here, Celestia. We love our HP. A bit of positive spell power for our heals. Not that we use them too often. Because we do run in epic defensive fighting. And that makes our range quite small. Um, I took Mouse Frog because we are wisdom based, helps in raids like Bubba, perfect weapon fighting, epic DRR, a weapon critical and whatever else. And this is basically what, what the build does. You run through your rotation of Consume, Jade Strike, Lock on the Sky, and Smite Foe. Now, the Smite Foe here, there's an argument for that to not take it at all, but with Smite Weakness, it gives you a little bit more vulnerability on the target. More debuffs to Mary, like I've been saying. And, uh, yeah. Just cycle through all your buffs and debuffs for the party and yourself. And you have yourself a pretty effective and strong build with a lot of flexibility. 
and uh, yeah, so people appreciate it. It's great in pugs. And if there's any questions, like as always, just hit me up on the uh, DDO Discord. I'll leave a link to me, myself, or the Discord down in the uh, chat. Uh, cheers for watching, and I'll see you all in the next vid.